The correlation between presumed cause and effect during the First World War had massively increased the belief in the power of the media. It was seen by many as an immensely powerful tool, either for good or ill. Therefore, not only scientists, but governments too wanted to understand how persuasion through mass communication worked. Scientists all over the world received funding to further study these phenomena, which of course fueled research into this area. Persuasion through mass communication was a hot topic, both as a danger and as a potential solution for many problems. Economists were looking for ways to use the media to turn the financial crisis of the 20s and 30s. Sociologists thought that the media could be used to strengthen or weaken role patterns, and they used these ideas to study the emancipation of women, for instance. All of these scientists basically studied the question, how could one guard against the power of the media, and how could you harness its potential for your own benefit? The underlying notion is, of course, the premise that media have a huge effect on the behavior of people. Also, commercially the all-powerful media paradigm thrived. The advertising industry boomed, and market research agencies started to study who read or listened to which medium. Media organizations needed this info to sell more ads for better prices. These commercial market researchers further added to existing knowledge on the media landscape and its audiences. They also standardized techniques to conduct audience research, for instance by large-scale surveys, which were then statistically analyzed via a fixed format and repeated by others all over the world. The market research industry quickly grew and maintained its own standards on high-quality research. Many students who studied these issues in the university went on to work in one of the growing research firms, using their theories and methods in a more practical setting, but with the same dominant attitude prevailing, that media have a potential for great effects on the behavior of their audiences. We call the theory that mass media have a direct, immediate and powerful effect on its audiences the hyperdermic needle theory. Basically, the sender injects the message into the audience with use of the media. The audience is seen as passive and more or less unable to resist and immediately affected. It should be noted that effects in this perspective are seen as short-term, immediate, focused on change rather than reinforcement, and finally, uniform among the audience, which means that audience factors are not really important. Another word for this theory is the magic bullet theory, another cool name for basically the same metaphor. A sender fires his message into the brain of a receiver with use of mediated communication. Scholars found many examples of the presumed power of mass communication and went forth to study these systematically. The most famous example is perhaps that of the Martian invasion of 1938, when multitudes panicked because of a radio show in which Mars attacked the Earth. We'll discuss this example in the next section of our MOOC, first from the perspective of the all-powerful media and then from a different angle.